Hello people, this is Barry, your favorite European booktuber, and today we're going to talk about what was, to date, my biggest loss when it comes to Pokemon investing. Now, before we do so, a thing I wanted to, to cover because I think it's, it's pretty funny, um, in case you missed it, uh, there was for a, a couple of days, maybe less than 24 hours, pretty much a Pokemon investing drama, and uh, that involved uh, two big personalities in the Pokemon community when it comes to investing. Michelle Genomics, Alex, and uh, Rob Burns. Now, I found it pretty funny, uh, even though, uh, you know, it all started with uh, Alex posting out a video uh, about how everyone was talking about a market crash. Um, and it pointed out a, a few content creators, such as uh, Rob, and uh, where they were saying that uh, Sol and Shield altars were crashing, they were going down. Now, I think some of it has to do with uh, how people define the word crash. Um, given the fact that we are in YouTube on YouTube and we're not using a common language, yes, we're all talking English, um, even though if so, for someone it's not uh, their first language, <clears throat> uh, but we don't use a common definition of crash. I think that pretty much sums everything you know that started after that, as uh, you know, Alex didn't agree with the fact it was a crash. Uh, Ralph thought it was a crash. Uh, you know, I says it's 20, 30 percent uh, move to the downside. I think it'd be a crash. You know, as long as we don't use uh, a common definition of crash, these problem will keep existing. Uh, that's the way I see it. But then in the response video, which uh, was deleted, both Rob's and uh, Alex's videos got deleted. Uh, basically, Alex was like, how can, can this be a crash? Because he pointed out TCG player and uh, said how and looked at prices and they were not going down. Uh, but the problem was that it was looking at lightly played condition cards. So Robert, uh, which I, at this point looks like it felt a little bit offended, uh, he basically said, Alex, can you read, man? Um, so it was a bit of sarcasm. Maybe Alex took it a bit personally because of the response video that came after that. And uh, I think also Robert took it a bit personally, uh, considering the end of the video, it was like, uh, don't call me a liar. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly. Um, so I think that's why uh, Rob basically, you know, responded to that. Uh, as well as he pointed out that, uh, you know, Alex, look at the chart when, you know, look at what you're posting out here. Uh, make sure you're uh, looking at the right chart. Um, otherwise, you're going to spread misinformation. Uh, and then basically, uh, the day after, if not even a matter of hours, uh, Alex responds where uh, he said, uh, I mean, I don't like his response, to be honest he uh, started the whole argument with uh, you know it was kind of a how dare you talking uh, when uh, you know you've been in the hobby less than me uh, you've been uh, you don't have as much investors as, as i do uh, which kind of made me you know made me think about you know when you're kids and uh, you know you got your little new toy and then another kid at the playground comes along is like oh that you call that a toy and it shows you his big new shiny uh, you know car toy it kind of felt like that um but yeah didn't like that response and then uh it was basically start out ranting on things that i don't think uh, robert mentioned in his video uh and then just briefly talked about 20 10 seconds how we messed up on the lightly played near mint situation not here to create further drama but i, I thought you i update you on that guys uh, i'm not sure how many people are going to watch this video either way no but uh, i thought it was pretty funny as uh, you know I can understand Robert's point of view. Uh, I can understand Alex just because, you know, by looking at Alex's videos, I get an idea of his personality, at least when it comes to the character. I don't know if, I don't know, I don't, I don't know either of them in person. So the what I see on YouTube, I consider, uh, you know, a character. I don't consider them to be like that in person. Uh, they could be, but I have no idea because I don't know them. Uh, but that being said, I thought it was pretty funny um, as two grown-ups, uh, you know, responding to each other, but that's the internet. Uh, but it looks like they settled it down privately as both video got taken out. But remember guys, and that goes to all of you, when something goes on the internet once, it'll always stay public forever. That being said, uh, best comment uh, for all that drama goes, uh, in my opinion, to, to this guy right here, uh, which commented this uh, after the last video posted by Alex, um, which was the response to Rob's video, which if you watch the video, uh, you'll definitely laugh at this. Now. What was my biggest loss? Well, believe it or not, uh, you don't, uh, you're do not you not entitled to believe me. My biggest loss was selling um, Rayquaza uh, PSA 9 
alt R from Evo Skies English, as well as Athena, also in English, PSA 9 from Lost Origin, and I lost 50 euros for the two of them. That was my biggest loss to date, realized. Do I have any unrealized losses? Well, considering to the lowest prices available on the market, if I price my items, my current uh, Pokemon investments at that price, uh, I am uh, in the greens. But once again, that is unrealized gains. And as many people apparently like to say here uh, in the Pokemon space, it's not a loss until you sell, it, just like it's not a gain until you sell. Um, now, that is, they're both, I, I mean, I agree with the it's not a gain until you sell, just but I don't really agree with it's not a loss until you sell. It's something sounds really something stupid. You, you tell yourself because you don't want to be you don't want to admit you were wrong. Now, that's the biggest loss I took. Could that be avoided? Yes, uh, because obviously I sold before the boom. I sold uh, about two three months before the boom, and uh, what did I learn from it? Well, the main takeaway I got from that is. If you have a mint copy of a major chase card, and that is a Pokemon people want, just like, you know, it's very rare in terms of uh, not scarcity in supply, but, you know, to pull that card, it, it's gonna take a lot of packs, rare in that sense, not in terms of scarcity. Also, I'm sorry to being a chase card, because who didn't want and who doesn't want the Tina, who doesn't want the Rayquaza from uh, US Kais. And if you buy them at uh, what is not the top of the market, then uh, be patient. It doesn't mean they're gonna go up, but looking at history, chase cards tend to go higher in price. Once again, what happened in the past doesn't mean it's gonna happen in the future. Otherwise, we'd all be rich. Otherwise, I'll be put putting hundreds of thousands into Pokemon, which I don't have, but I could borrow, right? If I knew the future, I could use leverage to my advantage, but I don't, and none of us does. However, that is my biggest loss to date, which doesn't mean no more losses are gonna come. And doesn't mean I am a, a wizard because I only lost 50 euros in total ever since I started by investing. It could have been luck, I admit that. However, if you play the right cards, if you buy low, sell high, or just don't sell, and uh, if you buy what you think is good, you do your research, you do your homework, you spend time, and you just buy what you think is good, then you might have a slightly advantage, a slightly hedge over the rest of the market. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the content, I would highly appreciate if you subscribe, as many of you watching are not. As well, if you want to join the Discord and talk about Pokemon, you're more than welcome. It's absolutely free. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Arrivederci.